Chris, this is a fascinating technology. I've been around Beam all day today, and I have to say this has to be one of the, the standout showpieces. Can you explain what this machine is and what you're doing? So this is part of our hybrid range. So this is what we call the FSW, so friction stir welding. So the idea being a hybrid, you've got two processes and one machine. So with this, we can do welding as well as machining in the same platform. Right, okay, so how, how on earth does this weld? This, this is fascinating, because I know you've got the tool here, so explain. So effectively what we got is what we call a pin. Now this is a special Mazak IP design. And this goes in the spindle nose or in a, in a, in a, in a tool in holder? tool holder, which will go into the normal spindle, yes. Yeah, so it can be tool changed. Uh, you can have multiple tools in the same tool mag, yes. So the idea of our design is that we can then weld at a B0 position, which isn't very common in these FSW machines. What do you mean B0? So you've not got a tipping? So basically, you're perpendicular to the piece. Whereas commonly, you would have to have a tilt, uh, which is how they kind of iron flat the weld. Um, so for example, this is just a demonstration piece. So what we have is obviously um, a cavity, which can then, like a semiconductor, cooling channels, things like that. In a conventional way, you would then mill um, a groove for uh, O-rings, you then bolt it down, it can cause lots of problems. But with this technology, you can simply put your plate on. Using this pin, this will then rotate, this will then plunge into the material, and what effectively does, it doesn't melt it, but it softens it. So it will soften the material, it will then stir it together, mix it up, which then creates a very, very strong weld. Okay, so what about that particular tool? So you're not using the material from that tool to create the weld. The weld is coming from the, the material yes. here. So the tool will just make this material soft and then it mixes it up, so it stirs it up together. So how does it calculate that process in terms of the speed, the depth, the, the pressure, the power, all of those things so that make a weld? That's part of our job. So we have a lot of uh, research from Japan. So uh, when we get a customer trial, they'll give us a drawing. This is what we want to do. As part of the first stages, we will then develop the parameters. So for us, it's about the feed and also thrust control, um, at which point we do have some process monitoring within the system as well, which will help us control that. Because as you can imagine, no metal is flat. So to get a nice, reliable weld, the idea is that the process monitoring will try and achieve the correct thrust. So it can then move up and down in Z to then create a nice consistent weld. What about the wear on that tool and whose who's is that tool? So again, these are from Japan, so we've worked very closely with a tool company to create these tools. What's it made of? This is high speed steel. So the idea is these are much easier to manufacture, certainly for trials. Um, so for this, we can get anywhere between 100 to 500 meters worth of weld. But the idea is once we've proved the process, we then make the carbide version, which then you will get 10 times the tool life. Okay, now, okay, once you've done the weld then, you're then gonna pull in your normal cutting tool or, or and, and basically then, well, this is your, this is, so this is an example there, if you wanna show that, Chris. So as you can imagine, when the tool goes in, it's got to go below the surface. As it stirs, it then creates what we call flashing. So it's just like bits of material. So you will then need to clean it off. So being in a hybrid platform, obviously it's much more simple. Everything's on the same WPC, and it's job done. Uh, final point, and one of the, the uh, areas of this that's have been of real interest to your customers is differing materials. Right. So the idea is the friction stir process, because it's done below melting point, it's what we call the plasticized state. Basically, you're softening the material, but because of that, you're putting a lot less stress and impact into the part itself which means we can then start putting multiple materials together. So very common certainly in semiconductors is like copper to aluminium, but certainly in the EV market, uh, they're doing steel to aluminium, which in conventional welding is just not possible. Um, whereas with this process, it is now possible.